Boom, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome to another episode of Dream Chasers, your home for house music. We've got another killer guest on the show with us today. Many of you may recognize this face, this name. Um, I've had the pleasure of getting to know him now. I was going to say it's almost been about three three years. I guess we're coming up on the two-year mark here. We'll talk about um, how we first got connected and stuff today here too, man. But ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the one and only Lowe's Bull, or as we may know him, Lowe's Seca. Welcome yeah. to the show, mate. Thank you very much for having me on, mate. It's a pleasure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to um, a lot of, you know, we were kind of just chatting before we hit record, uh, a lot of what we're going to dive into here today. To Warm Academy, your story, networking, um, speaking of networking, how you got in with with Graham over at Data Transmission, what you're working on there. Um, I wasn't even fully aware of what you were doing until about five minutes ago. My mind's a bit blown right now. So, dude, just to dive into it, let's let's start with the story. You know, um, everyone's house music journey is different. DJ journey is different. What was the moment for you when you look back on your life where you're like, wow, you know what? This is the direction I want to go. Yeah, well, it's interesting for me because I didn't, I primarily, I didn't really get into house music until quite, quite late in my um kind of music career. I cut my teeth in drum and bass basically. Before that, I was, I had long hair and I was a metalhead. So, <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it wasn't until I went to college and then I was hanging around with a guy called um Zach Kemp. He then went on to be Trolley Snatcher in the dubstep game. And we also had Flux Pavilion in our in our courses as well. What, so. About what year was that? Oh, mate, it's probably 15 fucking years ago. Yeah, mate, sorry. I, I swear. No, just... Oh, yeah, let it rip. Let it rip. I didn't realize that uh, you had, well, you mentioned drum and bass, but also kind of a dubstep entrance to the industry. Yeah, I mean, one of my many aliases was Skepsis. Um, and then you, you'll know there's a big Skepsis now, but my one of my dubstep names was Skepsis back way, way, way back in the, in the day. I was playing like random concept and stuff like that. But yeah, I cut my teeth in drum and bass and I was playing all the free parties around here. And yeah, from there, um, went to uni. And then that's when I started getting into more like bass house, kind of like my new Lang, that kind of like AC Slater night bass kind of vibes. Oh, wow, dude, I got to go through some yeah, any of your old stuff online. Uh no, I don't think it is, but I can send you a load of it. I found a load of it on a hard drive the other day. It's not bad. Some of it's pretty okay. Pretty ropey. Sometimes mixed the old stuff you don't want it out there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I ever start making bass music again, I think I've probably got all the projects that I can revisit. Some of the ideas were good. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's cool. Yeah. But, uh, but from there, I think I can't even remember how I first really got into Tech House, and like I think, I think I just downloaded a random Groovebox DJ mix. You know, um, the I think it's a Spanish DJ Groovebox, and that was like the first time I like really got into tech house because I just fell in love with like the groove. It's like kind of dusty beach music, I'd call it. You know, it's just perfect for the beaches, basically, and parties like that. So I could go on that... for hours about why tech house is the greatest. That's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But yeah, so for me, it's, it was just all about the percussion, the groove, and just the vibe. Um, just a few vocal hits here and there, and that, and yeah. That was that's kind of like when I first really got into it, and from there, just started producing loads of it. Went got into a duo at one point, and then um, that kind of came to a came to an end in the lockdowns and that. And yeah, I think that leads me up to the point that you want to talk about with the Tour Room Academy, which is um, basically, I I, th I felt like I was a competent producer, but you can always learn more, and I also wanted to kind of get into their network, and the easiest way to do that is just to go through the academy. So. Yeah, dude, I want to I want to zoom in on that. Well, two things. One, two, before we talk about the Academy, um, what was the first Tool Room record that you ever came across or what what initially looped you in to even knowing that Tool Room existed? Um, I it was probably a groove box one off of that groove box set, to be honest. Um, yeah. And then when I was investigating him and then you obviously you do the beat port thing, didn't you? Groove box. And then, yeah, just found all the Tool Room stuff and then just got really into that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah so it was probably that i can't really remember though <laughs> what, what, there's got to be like a, a a record that comes to mind for you though in that early phase that you really liked for me um and looking back on it i mean i have so many i'd say and no disrespect to this one but like so many songs i like even more from the label since discovering it but the one that did hook me in first was your love by by mark mm. um what what was the hook for you? Is there got to be one that you remember? Oh, mate, with, my my memory of tracks is so bad, mate. I'd have to load up Beatport quickly. <laughs> look. Um, I suspect it was a Groovebox one, but I wouldn't be able to know. Um, let me just have a look. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. It's always cool to just to like high, like I, I know I remember Natalie Knox stood out to me because she went with the Proc and Fitch one. Um, yes, well, they're they're absolute bells yeah, as well. A good one. Um, yeah, the other thing for me was it was just the vibe as well. Like I went to um, Solid Grooves in um, when they were what was that massive club in Ibiza called? They used to take over the little like sphere sphere room, the observatory. And I, I wish I could talk about Ibiza the way you are right now. I still have to get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, and that was it. Like that, that would that solidified it. So it was like the solid grooves, kind of like tech house, stripped back, minimal, kind of, kind of like that kind of vibe. That was the other thing that just like latched me straight in. So I wouldn't say like like I said, like my journey into like house music is a little bit different to most people's because I didn't get into it until I was old. So I haven't got like that kind of yeah. thing where you look back to like an old track that's massive. I could talk about loads of drum and bass tracks that do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I, yeah, it, again, I didn't know anything about, that, anything about that with the DNB and the dubstep background for you too. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> then, as far as the academy goes, and you and I, we first met. Actually, got I know we have a picture on my Instagram somewhere <laughs> in in the genesis of my page of us hanging out at London Calling twenty twenty two. Great event. Met met a lot of people there personally. Networking was off the chain, and that's kind of you know what you mentioned. And I, I run into that now as I. And I still feel very, uh, you know, much considered a rookie when it comes to production and, and skills in this industry. But I meet a lot of people that I recommend to the academy, and sometimes their first take is, "Oh, you know, my my production isn't that bad. I don't I don't need it," or like you know something like that. And I'm <laughs> like, bro, the network and the connections, that's where it's at. And you just you just mentioned that was like your number one goal. So um, I applaud you for kind of having that vision because I think a lot of a lot of producers can get narrow-minded and not realize that's the biggest takeaway so could you just talk to us about like some of your biggest takeaways from the academy yeah i well the networking thing is the number one easily like um like i said i kind of did the course i felt confident in my production anyway but you can always learn more like you never know everything but for me i just wanted easy access to their team um which is you know he you he, he, he in this industry networking is absolutely key for everything so if you can kind of buy buy your way into like having weekly meetings with people who are at the top of the tree then it's invaluable you know and of course learning stuff and then sign free tracks to the record label the year after um and that's, I don't think those that, that's every every signed. academy student's dream right there yeah <laughs> exactly yeah and i don't think that would have happened without the talk doing the tourum academy because i would have just been like turning up to the events shooting a mig usb is like everyone else does you know and those usbs usually just go into a drawer and get used for something else don't they so <laughs> yeah man i want to talk about something that you just highlighted there too and we got to give you a round of applause for not only getting one but three records signed within a year of graduation as you know from meeting a lot of people in the in the academy that's everyone's dream um and i think when you're new i mean i even look back on my journey it was like literally the only label i even cared about was tool room yeah. and, I, and i and i was lucky enough to have yeah my first record um on leaders in the new school too but um you know they and it's funny man they say it to you over and over in the academy like hey guys check out other labels consider getting stuff signed to other labels and then you just meet so many hard-headed uh rookies that just want to get signed by tool room so you're an A&R guy too you know what it's like to have to go through records and tell people no and like that type of thing so if we could just hammer this one home again for anyone who's like newer to production and has that vision of getting signed by that one label, you know, what would your recommendation to that person be? Um, broaden your horizons. Like tool room, isn't the only label on the planet and speaking from firsthand experience, um, they want you to be going to other labels as well. So you can grow your artist kind of career, uh, bigger ways. Cause they're not going to release a record from you every month they have a million other artists don't they so you need to have other labels like i think um oh, who is it it might have been pete said something about it but yeah so if you've got like say five good homes for your music that means you can have a release every month um on one of them and do that twice a year and then because no one releases in december like you just get swallowed by christmas and that Jan- january can be a bit slow as well so most people you'll find will start releasing from february onwards um so if you have five decent homes for your music that's a release every month you know actually it's the first time i heard that take but that's brilliant i love that um yeah. 
which you can't do if you're only releasing on tour room. So. <laughs> right. Um, <clears throat> cool. And then, so basically, as A and R at Data Transmission, your word to the to the masses is, "Hey, if anyone sends me a record, I'll sign it, guaranteed." Right. <laughs> 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 jokes, jokes. Tell us about that though, dude, because I feel like, man, that's got to be. I'm not really in a position currently to to have to say no to so many people. And I feel like that's got to be tough, right? Like, how do you manage that? Um, well, we do most of our A&R stuff on a live stream, which you obviously know, Graham, um, he's, he's, he's a legend. Um, he's also Lots crazy. Of, and, so go follow them guys, by the way, anyone too, if you don't follow yeah. data transmission, Lowe's, uh, Graham, a lot of valuable information coming from them, but yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah. That's it. And like, we, we do the live streams every, we do them on Monday and Wednesday every week. Um, unless stuff gets in the way two hours and that's where we kind of listen to everything so you kind of get quite good at just speedily listening to stuff and being able to give feedback we call them feedback streams but we sign the majority of our music from those streams so if people want to submit join our discord um it's the grand farmer discord and you can basically submit um one track every session and you'll get feedback um and like i said we sign the everything for 63b and most of it for dt weapons comes through the streams um so yeah if you want to if you want to sign up jump in there that's cool actually i, I wasn't even aware of that so you might see a few general <laughs> moses tracks sliding through now dude uh what well, uh, now you can just send them straight to me <laughs> <laughs> um what about uh your name i know you talked about especially with the dubstep and dmb background you've cycled through names throughout your career i mean although i'm kind of again referring to myself as new throughout the past 15 years i also have gone by previous stage names that looking at where i'm at now i'm like i don't even want to share them because they're just so ridiculous compared to this one but how did you how did you land on uh low low seca um yeah basically i needed a name and quick time um the, the name i had chosen to i think i cycled through about three different aliases um and danny had said like because i'd signed a track to tour room and i still didn't have a name <laughs> um or, or or i'd chosen the name and then basically i think it was like i think it was about four months before the release and then someone else popped up on spotify with that name so i had to change it and oh it i was, didn't know that wait was yeah. that when you had when you had so you had atat -AT. yeah that's what i was rolling with the yeah. at thing you know out of star wars um and then yeah someone else popped up on spotify with a name and it's just like instantly you've just got to change your name haven't you because yeah, yeah. what's the point i don't want to have at, at uk it'll just look ridiculous you know <laughs> um yeah. i don't really like the whole bracket uk thing on the end of people's names as well it's it's i feel like it, it the idea sounds good but i feel like it becomes a real hurdle as you grow yeah. you know you don't realize That's that good. until you're in it um but we got to talk about Lowe's Seca. I'm, dude, I'm sure yeah. you get this all the time. If not, I'm going to be the first person to ask you, which again, I bet money I'm not. How do you navigate when someone's like, oh, is it, why is it not Lowe's Steppa? Right. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, someone else said this to me the other day. They said, did you get your name from Lowe's Steppa? Right. That's like, the, nah. <laughs> we, got, we just got to send a message to Lowe's Steppa. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So basically, obviously, no, my name's Lawrence. Everyone calls me Loz. So like, that's, that's just my name. And then um, the Seca thing is a bit of a throwback to my mum who passed away for COVID. Um, so as part of her name is kind of like, I just switched it up the wording, the lettering a little bit. And yeah. So it's kind of a throwback to her, basically. Um, oh. And I think that sounds like my name's Loz Bull, which I also didn't think sounds like a DJ name. Um, so the other one, it sounds cool, doesn't it? Like, And I would have gone with Seca just as a DJ name, but there was already a Seca on Spotify as well. So <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, and eventually it was just like, oh, fuck it, Loz Seca, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. Well, I, dude, I, I do look forward to the day. If you guys vibe, stay aligned where you do uh, collab with Low Steppa, I think that'd be <laughs> that'd be cool to see. But also uh, just shout out tribute to your mom, man. That's um, some powerful stuff. I did not know that. So I yeah, so. it's. I think it's nice. It's just like a little throwback to her, and it's yeah. So it's cool. I was actually with Low Stepper at a party the other day. Um, oh yeah, there you go. From somewhere else, so I only got to chat to him very briefly. Um, so I didn't get to throw in the collab idea just yet. <laughs> I mean, it, I think it's one of those things where literally just from the name, it's it's bound to happen, um, at some point. So that's cool, man. Uh, could you tell us a little bit, you know, about um, like as far as venues you've played at i've been following you for a while now too like i've seen you've got some good experience some good reps in there festivals um other other opportunities to to dj in front of us pretty big big crowds now um 
what's been your favorite venue to play at so far? Uh, the one last weekend or the weekend before, sorry. Um, uh, Fred Roche Gardens for Hidden Festival, biggest crowd I've ever played to. It was absolutely epic. I loved it. Um, yeah, and the like, there was like the local talent as well. They're brilliant. Just that, just that whole thing is just a, is such a sick festival. Just in Milton Keynes as well, which is um, it's just needed the scene kind of reinvigorating again. So to to be part of that and watch how it's like growing. Like they've just announced that the next venue's like ten thousand capacity, so that's doubling in size. Um, nice. So yeah, and the weird data transmission. We work closely with them, so. Yeah, it's nice to kind of get the call out most times for it. So yeah, I'm a very fortunate position for that to be kind of like like a good good um good gigs regularly, like at least one a year. So yeah. And they're doing sure. like loads of other little bits and bobs here and there. But you didn't hear that from me. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> what's your dream uh what's your dream venue to play at? Uh Fabric in the UK, I think, or Fabric in Spain in um in um spain is it spain yeah that's the first uh, time uh we've asked this question i don't know maybe 15 times that's the first time i heard fabric so tell us about it yeah it's the first proper nightclub i ever went to as a kid Man, you know, i think I was nice. like 17 18 and just like loved it there it's just so cool like they've got like spring loaded dance floors and everything and it's just oh really the vibe in there was yeah the vibe in there was wicked um so that, that's as far as venues i think that'd just be like the one like the nostalgia thing you know um for that reason 100%. um club space miami looks pretty wild <laughs> no, it's definitely as well there's a few um and then as far as like brands it's definitely elro i'd love to play at an elro party i think my, my sound um would would probably sound quite key there as well not key um, that's the first time someone said elro on the show and just looking back on it now i mean that just the way they do things that you're right i'm I'm with you on that and it's really cool how the nostalgia plays such a factor i'd say majority of anyone we ask that question it comes down to you know their dream venue is something tied to their story their journey you know yeah so, definitely. yeah makes sense i've done it <laughs> yeah i'm sure you'll get over there have you had a chance to play in the states yet I've never been to the states, mate. Oh, we um, gotta get you over here, man. No, no. I, I, I think I'm definitely probably thinking about hitting up Miami for the uh, the Miami Music Week next year. Um, I'd love to play in New York as well. To be honest, I'd just love to go and visit New York apart from anything else. But if I could tie some gigs in over there, that would be brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep an eye and an ear out for you, man, because you have your background. You know, you've got some influence besides. Hey, I'm just a DJ that wants to play. So, uh. Yeah, New York. Uh, it's funny. I was actually in New York with um, a couple people that we would know. I won't. I gotta get their approval for their name, but a couple people that we would both know. And uh, it was cool to see two, you know, two Europeans have always seen New York on like the movies and on TV. And then when they when they were there, uh, I was like, man, this is just cool to see. It was kind of it reminded me of me when I went to London. I was like, oh my god, yeah. I'm in London right now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's cool, dude. We gotta get you to the states. You're built for it. Um, what would you say who's your dream person to or like yeah artist to collaborate with right now probably iglesias i've been asked that one before and it still hasn't changed just his um his drum i just want to watch how he makes his drums because his drums are absolutely unreal okay. as you know my music is just about percussion isn't it so it'd be Dude. just a yeah it'd just be like a schooling lesson wouldn't it <laughs> <laughs> i'd just be in awe um yeah that um I, I don't know. There's just so many. Andrus at the minute is absolutely smashing it. I'd love to sit in the studio with him. Um, Melee as well. That would be cool. There's just loads. Isn't there? the, the list just goes on and on and on. <laughs> right. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to pay attention to, to all three of those guys. Shout out to you guys as well if you, ever, if you catch this interview. Um, and then last question would be, what is your favorite record right now that's not your own? Um, Andrus, Papi. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's an track. absolute stormer that track. Yeah, Courtney, it's getting if you could everywhere. find that one, get a link to that <laughs> one in the show notes. That'd be that'd be solid. And if you're watching this on Instagram, someone could could drop the song ID in the comments. That'd be good too. So sweet, dude. Um, two more things. Favorite color, favorite flavored ice cream. Favorite color is green. As you can tell. Um, <laughs> favorite flavor of ice cream. Oh, I don't know. I like the kind of like the ones that are a bit sharp, so maybe like raspberry or something like that. Curveball. Nice. 
Nice. Yeah, we had <laughs> Olivia who was just on the show. She went with strawberry, just keeping it yeah. you know, pretty straight up. Nothing crazy. Cool, dude. Uh, what is the number one best way for our listeners and viewers to follow your journey? Uh, probably in Instagram is where I'm most active. I've got all the other ones, but I don't spend that much time on them. Um, Instagram is definitely the key one or, um, yeah, yeah. Instagram, which is just Loz underscore Seca, I think. Is there an underscore or is it just Loz Seca? Oh, two secs. <laughs> <laughs> he just had a happy birthday to the Loz Seca as well. Yesterday he's, he's recovering. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't planning to have too many drinks and that didn't go that well. We know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Loz underscore Seca is the one. There we yeah. Go. Sweet. All right, guys, go follow him. Thank you all for tuning into another killer episode of Dream Chasers, your home for house music. I'm your host, General Moses. We were joined today by the one and only Lo Seca. Lowe's, thank you for investing your most valuable resource with us here today, your time as well. Thank you very much for having me on, mate. It's been a guest. Absolutely. Looking forward to getting this one out. Guys, make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll catch you in the next episode. And remember, in all you think, say, and do, take it to the next level.